right, so life happened again. I am super behind on my what sold. It's just so busy. There has just been so much going on. And so I think what I'm gonna do in an effort to get caught up is today's video is gonna be everything that sold for me in the month of January. So I have no idea how long this video is gonna be because I just sat down to start filming it. I would recommend though getting yourself a nice hot cup of coffee, get yourself a snack or a five course meal. We're gonna be here a while. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I am a part-time reseller on a variety of reselling platforms. And when I say part-time, I mean like super part-time, like even more so than I've been in years past, just because things have been really busy, not only at school, but busier in my personal life as well. As my kids get older and get more involved in the different things that they're passionate about, it just takes up more of my time and I don't have the kind of time to invest into my reselling business like I did two, three, four years ago. It's just a different stage of my life and as hard as it is for me to like grapple with that, um, I am definitely embracing all the changes that life has thrown my way and I am loving, you know, being the gymnastics mom and going to all the meets and doing all those things, but really I feel like I'm I'm spending less than 10 hours a week on reselling and even less on YouTube if you couldn't tell just because I don't have the time. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about everything that sold for me in the month of January in 2024. It was a decent month, especially like I said, given the fact that, you know, I just am not investing as much time into my reselling business as I used to be able to. And we're going to be talking about every single thing that sold across all of my different platforms. So if this sounds interesting to you and if you're just thankful that I'm finally getting caught up, definitely hit that like button. And if you're brand new to my channel, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button as well if you enjoy tips and trips coming from someone who just does not have a lot of time to invest in their reselling business. If you're kind of in the same boat and want to learn how to maximize the amount of time that you spend on your reselling business, this is the channel for you. So let's start by talking about the first day of January, which was January 1st. I had one eBay sale and I was pretty surprised by this. It was something that I had purchased pretty recently. Um, where did I get it? I got it from my friend Adrienne who as I have shared many times before, has a ton of inventory, but has decided recently that she really wants to focus on just selling vintage items because that's what she's passionate about. She has access to a lot of great vintage pieces. And so she has been selling a lot of her more modern pieces to me at wholesale pricing, which just means she's selling it to me for basically the amount that she paid for it in the first place. And so um, I bought off of her for $5 this pair of Resistol, don't know if I'm saying that right, Ranch by Lucese, don't know if I'm saying that right either, handcrafted brown leather cowboy boots in a men's size 11D. Um, these were severely flawed, like they had lots of holes or like punctures through them. I don't know, like they were in pretty rough shape. However, it seemed like comps for these kinds of boots were pretty high. So I just shot for the moon. I listed them around like maybe 75 ish dollars, but they did sell fairly quickly, like within a week of being listed for $61 and 90 cents. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. Um, and so after shipping, after my cost of goods and eBay's fees, my net profit on those boots that again, were very severely beat up as you can see in the pictures, just lots of issues with them. I still made $52 and 60 cents on those. So I'm gonna call that a pretty big win. Nothing sold on the second, but on January 3rd, I did have a couple sales, one on eBay and one on my website. Um, during this time too, like at the very beginning of the year, I was actually at Disney with my students. We um, did this big trip to Disney World, the kids sang, it was a really good time. And I was just thankful that, you know, I did make a few sales while I was gone on that trip. So on eBay, I sold this Lucky Freedom Waffle Knit Blue tie-dye shirt. It was a woman's size medium. Um, I don't even know if it was Lucky brand because to be honest with you, the label tag it just said lucky on it. It didn't really look like any sort of lucky brand label that I've seen in the past. Um, it was something that I got from a coworker of mine. And we have a consignment deal where if the item sells and my net profit on that item is 
less than $25, I'll give her 40% of the cut. And um, if it's $25 or more in net profit, then I will give her 50%. This one sold for 15. And so clearly my net profit was gonna be under that $25 mark. So I gave her $4.77 and I made a net profit of $7.15. So, you know, not like the greatest sale in the world. And it was listed for a handful of months, but I was honestly kind of surprised that it sold as quickly as it did. And then the next sale, like I said, was on my website, which is Shop Becky Park. Com, and it was an item that I've had for a while. I've had it since April of 2022. It is a dress by the brand Rixo, and it was a collaboration that Rixo did with Target. Um, and I didn't really know anything about that brand. The main reason I picked it up at this pop-up consignment sale was because it was in a size 4X. So it was this Rixo for Target leopard polka dot ruffle spaghetti strap maxi dress, again, in a size 4X. That sold for $29.95 on my website. I had $9 into it, and so my net profit was $13.35. I do really try to prioritize picking up cute um, plus-size clothing whenever I can, just because I've heard from a lot of plus-size women that it's hard for them to find cute clothing at affordable prices and if I can find it in good condition you know at the thrift or at consignment stores what have you I always try to do that I do try to like spend a lot of time in the plus size section as well um, so I was a little surprised that that took a little bit longer to sell but I'm just happy that that finally made its way to a new home and I hope that the new owner loves it the next save sales that we'll talk about is January 4th and I started off with a really great sale on eBay it was the St. John E evening black Santana knit long duster topper jacket in a women's size four. It had a lapel with like sequins all over it. It was like a white lapel with sequins. It was beautiful. There was a flaw in that one of the closures, maybe like the hook that you needed for the hook and eye closure, like something, I, something was missing. Maybe it was the hook itself, but this bad boy sold for $119.90. I had $20.50 into it from a local estate sale. I was just like driving home one day from school and I think I took like, or maybe it was just like as I was going home, I saw the estate sale signs and obviously because I'm human and because I'm a reseller, I followed those estate sale signs and kind of went into a different part of my neighborhood than I normally would if I were just going home. And it took me to this beautiful house and they had some really cool pieces at their estate sale, this being one of them. And so like I said, it sold for $119.90. I made a net profit of $85.82 on that. St. John can be a really great pickup, especially if it is like a much more substantial piece like this. Like I said, it was like a long duster, it had sequins on it, it was gorgeous. And even with it being flawed, you know, it was missing a button or whatever, it still sold for really good money and I made a great profit on that. The next sale from that day was over on Poshmark. This was not nearly as exciting. I was, however, pretty surprised at how quickly it sold. It sold within like a couple months. It was this Perry Ellis black paisley button-up shirt in a men's size extra large. Um, it was made of a modal rayon blend, and I only had $2 into it because it was something that I got from a reseller buyout that I did. I just purchased someone's clothing, someone who learned that she hated selling clothing as a reseller, so I bought all of her clothing off of her. Um, I had $2 into that. My net profit was $10. Not a huge sale, but thankfully I did have a really nice sale, you know, earlier in that day. The next day of sales was January 5th. On eBay, I sold this pair of Zara Trafalic black faux leather pants. Um, they were kind of like pant leggings, I guess you would call them, and they were in a size extra large. They were high rise. They had ankle slits in them. Those sold for $23. That was an offer that was sent to me. I didn't have any money into them because they came from a beautiful human being named Becky. She's a viewer, and she has sent me inventory now for free three times, just boxes of inventory that I don't know. I don't know why she like wants to send this stuff to me. I'm thankful. I'm not going to question it. I asked her before if I could pay for shipping and she was like, no, I'm just going to send it to you. Enjoy. Thank you for your content. And I just am so thankful. And you're going to see a few other pieces from her in this what sold video, but 
I, ugh, I don't know, just so thankful. So I made a net profit of $19.77 because I didn't have anything into that. And the truth is most Zara faux leather pieces do really well for me. Even though they're not real leather, there's just something about them. Sometimes it's because it's a blogger favorite, but I know for myself, like I have a pair of faux leather black pants from Express in my closet that I will pull out every once in a while. They're just a nice staple piece to have. And I feel like whenever I pick up these kinds of pieces or are sent them for free from a viewer, they don't last in my closet for very long. They typically sell really quickly, so I would definitely consider them somewhat of a bolo. You're never gonna make a killing off of them, especially with them being faux leather, but you're gonna sell them pretty quickly. The next sale was over on Poshmark, and it was this pair of Lululemon Recognition Elevation Space Dye Flare Pants in a women's size 10. This I did pick up from that same friend of mine who, you know, is selling through all of her more contemporary pieces. Um, there was some pilling at the crotch, but it still sold for $34, and I made a net profit of $22.18 since I only had $3 into it from my friend. And those sold within like days of being listed, which I was kind of shocked by because I feel like Lululemon for me lately has been taking a little bit longer to sell and there was the pilling at the crotch, but it sold quickly. I got five stars on that transaction, win-win. The next sale on Poshmark from that day was this New With Tags Extreme E-Performance Purple Moisture Wicking Athletic Polo Shirt in a men's size 2XL. This was nothing exciting. It seems like kind of a generic brand, like maybe something you can get at Costco or something like that. It only took two months to sell. So I remember being very like, I don't even want to list this. Like, I don't feel like it's worth my time. It sold for $21. I had $2 into that because it came from the reseller who doesn't like to resell clothing. Um, and so my net profit on that was $12.78, which, you know, like for something that sold really quickly and was very quick to photograph, not bad, I'll take it. The next sale on Poshmark from that day was this Eddie Bauer black full zip soft shell jacket in a men's size extra large. It did have zippered pockets. This sold for $12 and it did actually have like, um, like a logo for a company. That company was Indelco Plastics Incorporation. I don't know what that is. So I'm not surprised that this sold for only $12 plus like just Eddie Bauer soft shell jackets in general aren't going to go for that much. Um, I had $2 into it from the same reseller buyout. And so my net profit on that was only $5 and three cents. That one I did have listed for a lot longer and I probably didn't have to take the time to list and sell, but you know what? I made a little bit of money off of it. That money will go towards a better inventory. It's fine. On January 6th, I had a few sales. The first one being on eBay. It was this pair of Travelers by Chico's brown animal print pull-on pants in a Chico size one, which is a US size eight. Those sold for $20. Um, I actually got them from a local consignment store last May. So those have been listed for a decent amount of time, like about half a year. And I picked them up at that consignment store during a birthday sale. So I had $3.47 into them, which is about the max that I'm I'm willing to pay for Chico's Travelers pieces. They used to do really well and I do still think that they have a following. They just don't go for as much. So my net profit on those was $13.62. The next thing to sell on eBay was this pair of Lissy blue cropped high rise stretch pull on pants in a women's size large. Um, these I believe were in my possession for even longer. They're from July of 2022. So this brand, I don't know, like it's okay. I think like it's pretty expensive retail, but it's definitely a brand that I don't pick up very much anymore just because I feel like I have to sit on it for a really long time. But these sold for $20. I had $2.52 into them from a different birthday sale at the same consignment store. My net profit on those was $14.60. And the last sale of that day was over on Poshmark. This actually sold fairly quickly. Again, I think it was only listed for maybe a month. And it's kind of crazy because I feel like local collegiate pieces have been selling fairly quickly, which you would think that they wouldn't given that it's a pretty niche market. I live right by the University of Illinois and I fell into some inventory from a reseller buyout and probably in like May or like June, I did do a reseller buyout from a local reseller and there was a good amount of like sweatshirts and just lots of different things for my local university. And Again, I was kind of apprehensive about listing those things because I figured it would take a lot longer for those things to sell given that it 
only really appeals to a smaller group of people, but they have been selling like hotcakes. Like they really didn't last in my closet for very long. And not only that, but I was noticing that they were selling to people who lived like 10 minutes away from me, which is kind of sad because, you know, we could have like just met up somewhere and I would have been able to save them a little bit of money on shipping, but they bought these things off of me on Poshmark. And so they paid about $8 for shipping you know, it is what it is. But um, this item that sold was this new with tags, Kari Plus Kai, don't really know the brand, but it was a University of Illinois collegiate sweatshirt in a women's size extra large. Unfortunately, she was like, this does not fit like an extra large, but Poshmark doesn't let you do returns based off of fit. I do think like I left a comment to her in the conversation being like, hey, reach out to me and we'll try to work something out. Like maybe we can meet up and you know, I'll let you do the return. But but also I feel like Poshmark may have blocked that comment because I think I put my email address in there so that again, she could like get back to me, but Poshmark doesn't want you taking things off of their site. I wasn't trying to like, you know, sell her something off of this site. I was actually trying to do the opposite, but I wonder if she got the message because I never did get an email from her. That was actually something from my colleague at work. It was a consignment deal. So I gave her $8 for that sale and I made a net profit of $12. And let's see, she purchased that for my full asking price of $25. The next day of sales was January 7th, and on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Talbot's Flawless Five Pocket Crop Blue Jeans um, in a women's size 14W Petite. A very specialized size, but they did sell for $28 on Poshmark. Um, I had $3.47 into those from a local consignment's birthday sale, so my net profit on those was $18.93. On January 8th, on eBay, I had a really great sale. It was this pair of L.L. Bean boots. They were brown and they were the main hunting shoes. They had Gore-Tex technology as well as Thinsulate technology. They were in a men's size eight wide, which is a smaller size, but they still sold for $75. I think I had them listed for like 100 and I picked them up at a local Goodwill for $8.99, which is crazy to me because my local Goodwill loves to mark up dumb things like, They'll mark up jeans by like Maurice's or like, I don't know. They mark up really dumb stuff. And then when they get really quality stuff like this, sometimes they just don't know. And I'm very thankful for that. So my net profit on that was $56.99 and they only took a couple months to sell. The next sale from that day was over on Poshmark and it was this loft blue silk blend printed lightweight long sleeve tunic in a women's size small. I've had that listed for a very long time. I actually got it at a local consignment store during like the shelter in place era of COVID where like we could not leave our homes. Um, but I had made a deal with this local consignment store that I would shop by myself in their storage unit so that it was safe. I wasn't like around other people. I didn't have to wear my mask or anything. Cause like I said, they would meet me at the storage unit. They would unlock it and just like, let me stay there. I would lock up myself when I was done and I would swing by the store just to kind of show them what it was that I had purchased, give them money. And it was a sweet, sweet, deal. And the clothing items that I purchased during that time came out to like 80 cents a piece, which I mean, you sometimes you can't even get stuff at the bins for that cheap. And most of the pieces that I got during that time, which, you know, at this point was like three years ago, um, most of it I have sold, but there are a few that just clearly were very bad buys that um, are still hanging around, this being one of them. So I had 80 cents into it. I made a net profit of $9.18. The next day of sales was January 9th. On Mercari, I sold this Free People beige ribbed knit button up sleeveless sweater in a woman's size extra small. This sold for $22. Um, I got it as part of an inventory buyout from a reseller that I did in like May of 2023, but I didn't get it listed till probably November or December. So this actually sold fairly quickly. I was kind of surprised that it sold as quickly as it did just because it seems like a much more dated free people piece. Um, but I had 385 into it and my net profit was $14 and 58 cents. And I think I mentioned this, but it did sell for $22. The next thing to sell that day on Poshmark was another super old listing. It was this pair of Ann Taylor wool blend Lindsay blue trousers in a women's size zero. I was so happy to even get an offer on this. The offer was $9 that I was like, holy cow, let me not break my phone as I like smash the accept button. I just needed to get rid of these because I've probably had them in my possession for like five years. 
six years. That's shameful. That's ridiculous. Um, but I made a net profit of six dollars and five cents. I think someone gave them to me for free again years ago for me to resell and they only took five years. The next sale was also on Poshmark. It was this new with tags, Shoshana Shayna, that was the style name, cream 100% silk strapless pleated dress in a size four. That sold for $65. I had $12.99 into it from a Goodwill like an hour and a half away. I was in this town with some students because they had rehearsals for this like festival that they were a part of. Um, and while they were rehearsing, I went thrifting. That was in, let's see, 2022, I wanna say. And this dress has really kind of been through it. Like it sold on eBay actually a few months ago, but the buyer returned it, I think based on fit. So I did have to relist it, but it did you know, sell for good money on Poshmark as well. And my final net profit on that was $39 and one cent. And then the last thing to sell this day on Poshmark was this pair of cut from the cloth Estelle yellow floral wide leg pants in a size medium. I just thought they were really pretty. I don't have the best luck with cut from the cloth and they definitely are much more well known for their jeans. I think they actually also sell like shirts and things like that but I just took a chance on this pair of pants because I knew I was going to be getting them for so cheap because they were part of a birthday sale from a local consignment store. I had $2.52 into them but they did take a decent amount of time to sell. I only made a net profit of $10.28. I think I'm going to stay away from cut from the cloth in general just because I don't do super well with their jeans or anything by them um, but definitely not even really going to consider anything that isn't denim from here on out. And then on January 10th on eBay, I sold this Nike red felt spell out hoodie pullover sweatshirt in a men's size large. I probably had this listed too high. I think I had it listed for like $75, um, but it sold for 41. This was something that a friend of mine gave me before he moved. Um, I had like $2 into it. I just gave him some money for all of this stuff and it probably came out to like $2 a piece. He gave me so much stuff and it was really great to be honest with you like it was a lot of really great pieces that sold for good money and there had been a few Nike pieces you know and everything that he gave me that did really well which is why I think it got really greedy with this and I was like I think I could sell this for $75 even getting 41 for it I think that's pretty great and because my you know cost of goods was so cheap my net profit on that was $29.93 but I did hold on to that one for like a year and a half, two years. Most of his pieces sold really quickly. I don't even know that there's really anything left from him. If there is, it's definitely the last of you know his stuff, but I made a lot of money off of everything that he gave me. The next sale on the 10th was over on Depop. I knew that these were gonna sell on Depop. Um, they sold very quickly, basically within a month and a half. Um, it was this pair of Skechers, brown leather, chunky lace-up Oxford shoes. I did put Y2K in the title because they're very Y2K. Um, they were in a size eight and a half for women. They sold on Depop for $65. Now I do pay for shipping on Depop, which is why I charged more for these on Depop than I did on other platforms. And I had $12.99 into them and I purchased them at the same Goodwill that I talked about earlier, the one that is in the same town where my students go to like festival and stuff, but it was from a trip that took place in 2023 instead of 2022. So I picked them up in October, listed them honestly like at the end of December, maybe even, actually I think I listed these in January. I remember these sold like within days. They sold so fast and my net profit on those was $33.32. This chunky Y2K platform shoe style is still so popular. Like anything that I get in that style sells so quickly. It is bananas. And then on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Gap Factory bootcut dark wash low rise jeans in a women's size four. I didn't really need to list these. And the truth is they've been listed forever. I got them like two years ago in a thread up DIY denim rescue box. Um, I had a dollar and 27 cents into them. So my net profit was seven dollars and 78 cents. Gap in general doesn't do well. And then add Gap Factory on top of that. I don't know why I even took the time to list these, but I did made a little bit of money. Moving on. On January 11th on eBay, I sold this rag and bone blue heathered long sleeve V-neck lightweight sweater in a women's size extra small. This one I got at a local consignment store. And you know, rag and bone, to be honest with you, 
It's so expensive and it just does not sell for good money anymore. I feel like their jeans still have the potential to do okay if you get like the trendiest, most recent styles, but even then it's kind of hard for me to move their pieces sometimes. So I was kind of surprised when this sold on eBay for my full asking price of $29.99. That was promoted at 3%. Actually, the Nike hoodie was promoted as well, as were the boots, the first sale that I talked about in this video. And I do find that promoting my listings on eBay does help me sell through them a little bit better. But these I only had $2.52 into from that local consignment store. And so my net profit on that was $22.60. I did sit on it for a decent amount of time, like at least a year. So, you know, like I said, Rag & Bone, it doesn't move very quickly. It's not the easiest brand to sell anymore, which is kind of a shame, but that's the nature of reselling. It used to be so popular. People used to get so excited about it. It just doesn't do as well as it used to. And then on Poshmark, I sold this Big Bang Theory red Sheldon Cooper Bazinga. That's like probably one of my favorite things <laughs> about this character on that show is whenever he would say Bazinga when he told a joke or did like a prank on someone. Bazinga. 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 And it didn't happen very often, but it hit every time he did. Um, it was just a graphic t-shirt and a men's size large. That actually sold for $15 on Poshmark, which is shocking to me, but I did have it for a very long time. It was from my very first reseller buyout. There was a local reseller who just wanted to stop reselling so that she could focus more on family. And I only had like a dollar into each item from her. So my net profit on that was $11. And then on the 12th of January, January on eBay, I sold this Nikely Nikely. I sold this Nike blue raglan short sleeve t-shirt dress in a women's size medium. I put the word athleisure in the title and this sold on eBay as a result of a 60% off sale that I was having. I selected like over four or 500 of my stalest listings that I was like, listen, if these sell for 60% off, I'm cool with that. Um, and I put them on 60% off sale and I did sell through a few things that way, this being one of them. So this sold for $8.80. I had $3.12 into it because that came from my coworker. So she got $3.12. I made $4.67. Not a killer sale. Some Nike pieces like that sweatshirt I talked about, you know, towards the beginning of the video can go for so much. And then things like this just are not super impressive. The next sale on eBay was this Woolrich green checkered button down short sleeve shirt in a men's size 2XL. It was 100% cotton. That one also sold as part of my 60% off sale and it sold for $10. It was promoted at 3%. I got that as part of an inventory buyout and I hit $3.85 into it so my net profit was $3.47. But again, I was just trying to get rid of things. Either things that, again, I had had for a long period of time or things that I don't know. I just didn't mind if they didn't sell for that much. I knew that they weren't super trendy pieces. I could sit and wait for the right buyer to come along, but at this point I was just like, I just need these things gone. My next eBay sale was this Ralph Lauren green plaid Blake. That was the style name. 100% two-ply cotton button-down shirt in a men's size extra large. That one was not part of the sale. That one sold for $24.99, which was my full asking price. And that's one of the things I do like about running sales on eBay, especially if you're not running your entire store on sale. I like that. It just kind of draws more attention to your store and you know, along with hopefully selling things that are on sale, you also get more eyes on your items that aren't necessarily on sale and you have the potential to sell through regular priced items as well, which is what happened here. Um, that one I had $3.47 into from a local consignment store birthday sale. That one was also promoted at 3%. And so my net profit on that shirt was $16.49. And you guys should be proud of me because I typically do not pick up button up shirts, but because I knew I was gonna get that one for cheap, I was like, I'll just go ahead and get it and you know, make some decent money off of it. The next day of sales was January 13th. And on eBay, I sold this Lululemon what goes around comes around pair of black flare pull on pants in a women's size 10. I don't know if that's actually the name of these pants. I feel like when I did the Google search and tried to figure out the style name, I kept getting so many random names or like there were so many variations of like style names that were similar, but like also very different. I went with what goes around comes around. That is definitely like a Justin Timberlake song title. I don't know. They still sold incredibly fast. So whether the style name was right or wrong, 
they still sold very fast, so I don't even care. But they sold on eBay for $28. I did get that from my local reseller friend who, you know, just doesn't like to sell modern clothing anymore. Um, I had $5 into those pants. I made a net profit of $18.28. I think I listed them like the 4th of January and they sold on the 13th. On January 14th on eBay, I sold this vintage Banana Republic black nylon quilted vest in a men's size small. To be honest with you, I I thought I would have to sit on this for a very long time, but it took less than a month to sell. Um, and it sold for $19.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. And it was something that I got from my viewer, Becky, who just sends me free inventory from time to time. So my net profit on that was $17.21. Becky, thank you again so much for that piece. It was really cool. I just didn't feel like it was the kind of thing that a lot of people were looking for right now, but super happy that I made the profit that I did on it and that it sold as quickly as it did. I also had a couple Mercari sales this day, the first one being this vintage Saddle King Sherpa line denim jacket in a men's size large. It had a corduroy collar. It was super beat up like there were rips and holes like you could actually even see like the red insulation on the inside of this jacket um, but it still sold for $32 and that was another piece from Becky so my net profit on it was $27.05. I'm a huge fan of selling flawed items because the truth is some people just don't care if it's flawed as long as you're crystal clear about what the flaws are in your listing description, in the title even, and especially in the pictures. You just want to make sure that within your listing you're telling the entire story of this piece and where the flaws are and how big they are. Um, and I made sure to do that because these flaws were pretty intense but with pieces like this like these kinds of vintage denim jackets some people want the flaws because it makes it look more lived in it gives it more character i kind of feel like that's what must have happened here because again these flaws were a very intense. The next Mercari sale from this day was this pair of Levi's 550 relaxed fit straight jeans in a men's size 34 by 29. Those sold for $28. I had $2 into it from the reseller who decided she didn't like reselling clothes, so my net profit on those was $21.61. And then on Poshmark, I sold this pair of American Eagle blue dark wash low rise jean shorts in a women's size eight. Um, it's March now when I'm filming. I do feel like shorts are definitely selling through. If you don't have them listed yet, go ahead and start listing them. People are not buying winter clothes anymore. They're very much looking forward to the spring. And even on January 14th, this person was like, I need some shorts. Um, they sold for $10 because this is definitely a much older style. And I had $3.85 into those shorts from a reseller buyout so my net profit on those was only three dollars and twenty cents on january 15th i had two ebay sales the first one was this marine layer blue pullover sweater in a men's size small um Marine Layer is actually one of my favorite brands. It's a pretty small brand. It's not super well known yet. Um, I have been to a brick and mortar store a handful of times. I've purchased a few pieces by this brand off of Poshmark and Mercari and things like that. Um, but it's just a really nice brand. I feel like it's got kind of like a preppy nautical I don't know it's it's just like a very classic brand. Um, they make some pieces that are just so soft. I feel like Marine Layer and Viore have this fabric that they use that's just like so soft and supple and just like nice against your flesh. This I just found at a Goodwill. The one, you know, in the town where my students were at a festival rehearsing. And I picked it up in October, listed it in December. It sold in January. It was an incredibly fast flip. And it sold for my full asking price of $34.99. I had $6.99 into it from that Goodwill. My net profit was $22.34. I do think that this is a really great brand to be on the lookout for. Again, it's not super saturated. It's not super well known. So this is a good time to be picking this brand up. The next sale on eBay was this W118 by Walter Baker yellow double zip moto leather jacket in a women's size large. This brand actually does have decent resale value and it is very expensive resale. I only sold this piece for $30, however, because there were a lot of flaws on this jacket. There were a lot of stains. There were a few like 
I don't know, like nicks in the leather. So it was not in the best condition, which is why I was willing to let it go for as little as I did. The leather felt really good, but it was just pretty beat up. So it sold for 30. I had 385 into it from a reseller buyout and my net profit was $21.85 on that. Um, like I said, flawed items can and will sell well. You just want to be very clear about what those flaws were. And then on the 16th of January, I had three eBay sales. The first one was by the brand Ann Crimmins for Umi Collection. Never heard of this, but I got this at the same estate sale where I got that St. John Evening piece. Um, they just had like kind of more mature woman pieces, but like great quality. I didn't know this brand, but I thought the piece was really interesting. It just had a very unique look to it. Um, it was this black and white 100% silk dress, but it had like tears and like the geometric print was like different for each tier. I don't know how to explain it. You can see it in the pictures. It was in a size 10. It sold on eBay for $48. That was the offer that was sent to me. I had $6.25 into it. I believe I got that on like half off day. And so my net profit was $35.09. The next sale on eBay was this Issa London black 100% silk gathered long sleeve dress um, in a women's size 12. It was pleated. That sold for $33.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. I believe there was a flaw on the dress. I cannot remember what the flaw was at this moment, but um, there was a flaw, which is why I had it listed lower than probably other people had similar dresses listed for. Um, I had $5 into it from a local consignment store they had an amazing sale where like most of the items that were on sale were $2, but there were some things that were marked up like this dress. So my net profit was $23.34 and that actually sold within a couple months. So that was very exciting. The last eBay sale of this day was this pair of vintage Levi's XX high rise mom jeans. They were made in the US. They were definitely from like the 90s and the waist was a size 30. Um, this I got a while ago. I got it man, two, three summers ago at a Goodwill outlet in Seattle. I actually don't even think that this Goodwill outlet exists anymore. That's what I heard from some viewers. It was the Kent location in Seattle. They sold for $13. Again, I'd had them for a long time, so I very happily let go of them for that price. I'm trying to think if that was part of my 60% off sale or not. I can't remember. Um, they were promoted at 3%. My net profit was $11.21. And then on the 17th of January on eBay, I sold this Skies Are Blue Coral Open Front Knit Embroidered Cardigan in a women's size medium large. This I got from a reseller buyout two and a half years ago, three years ago. I've had this for a very long time. Um, I had $3.92 into it. It sold for $12. My net profit was $5.72. Skies Are Blue is one of those brands that is sold in like stitch fix boxes. I think you can maybe, I mean, you can get it at other places too. It's, it's not like the most exciting brand. It does not have a high resale value. I would have never picked this up if I had just seen it at a thrift store, but because it was sent to me in a reseller buyout, I was like, sure, I'll go ahead and list it. I'll make a little bit of money off of it. And a little bit of money is exactly how much I made. The next thing to sell on eBay this day was this new with tags pair of Alice and Olivia black front zip leggings. They were in a women's size four. They were made in the USA. I wasn't expecting these to sell for a ton, but I got them from my local reseller friend, um, you know, because she was selling me current pieces. I, these aren't actually that current. They're probably a, a bit dated, um, but you know, modern pieces at wholesale pricing. I only had $3 into these and they sold for 25, which is actually a little bit more than I was expecting. Just because I feel like jeggings or leggings in general like these like they're not athleisure they're just like casual leggings that you would wear out and about I don't feel like there's very many people looking for this anymore but I made a net profit of $18.69 and then my last sale from this day was over on Poshmark it was by the brand Halara it was new with tags Halara I don't even know where you can buy this brand like I don't know if it's sold at like Nordstrom or anything like that but I do know a lot of like liquidation uh companies you know companies like Bazaar and I don't know who else they they sell Halara so I find that there's a lot of Halara on reselling platforms it's 
super oversaturated and people are generally not able to get a ton for their Halara pieces. I actually have some Halara pieces that I bought off of Bazaar because um, they gave me some credit to work with. I did do a review video of Bazaar Wholesale, just like my experience with it, and I will link that video right here. Just as a spoiler, I did not have very many nice things to say about it just because of things like this. I felt like they were selling pieces that a lot of other people had access to. I thought they were selling them for way too much considering how little you were going to get for them and how long you had to set on these pieces for. Um, but this was a beige bodycon sleeveless slip dress in a women's size small. It did have a slit in the back. It sold for $20. I had $3.85 into it because that actually wasn't purchased from Bazaar, but it was purchased from a reseller buyout and so my net profit on that was $12.15. It's a brand that I actually don't mind. I have a piece, like one of the pieces that I got um, when I purchased wholesale from Bazaar, I kept for myself because I liked how it fit and I it's actually one of my favorite tops. It's just hard to resell. And then on January 18th, I had one Poshmark sale and it was by Nakona Belt Co. It was this Western brown embellished leather belt with a silver buckle and a men's size 34. That actually got a lot of attention and it sold within like two weeks of being listed. I got it at a local consignment store for $4 and my net profit on that was $16. And then on January 19th, I had a few sales across a bunch of different platforms. And the reason why I sell on a variety of platforms is because I use a Chrome extension called List Perfectly. It is what I use to cross list to as many platforms as I want. Although in the year 2024, I have narrowed down the number of platforms that I sell on. I am heavily focusing on Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. And eBay continues to kind of be like the winning platform for me. Um, but List Perfectly just makes it so easy to sell on all of those different platforms because they make it so easy to cross list. So if that's a goal of yours is to get on more platforms in the year 2024, I highly recommend Liz Perfectly. I've been using them since, I don't know, I think I've been using them for like four or five years now and I have no complaints, only compliments. They're always striving to make their product better and better each and every day. Their customer service is amazing. I love it. So if you want to check it out, I do have a coupon code. It's Becky Park and it helps you save 30% off of your first month. I have the link down below in the description. Let me know if you have any questions about it. And I do plan on making a video on how I use this perfectly in the near future, just because they've added so many new features that I feel like my older list perfectly videos are a little bit outdated at this point. But on the 19th, the first platform where I sold an item was on eBay and it was this Molly Malloy never heard of it, not a brand that I'm very familiar with, but it was this Molly Malloy evening black sleeveless velvet cocktail dress in a women's plus size 16. That sold on eBay for $19.90. I had $2 into it because I got it from a reseller buyout, and so my net profit was $22.16. And then on Mercari, I sold this vintage Woolrich Buck Elk reindeer. I don't know. I just put all the words because I didn't know what this animal was, but it was this 100% wool winter sweater in a men's size large. I got this at a local consignment mm. store and I was shook when I saw it because I was like, this is so cool. It was on one of the new racks. That's where I get like 80% of the stuff that I source at Goodwills is on their new racks. When they first bring stuff out from the back room and they have things on their garment racks and they're starting to put stuff away, I will always ask the employee if it's okay for me to look through the rack just because I don't want to like mess up their system or make them angry or anything like that. And they're always like, yeah, because the more you take off of the rack, the less I have to put away. And so they're usually pretty happy about having someone like me, you know, look through the rack and purchase things off of it. Um, so this was on a new rack. They had it priced at $6, which is insane. Like I couldn't believe they didn't have that marked up, but they mark up like and Taylor stuff, loft stuff. It's my Goodwill is insane. And I listed it later than I would have liked. I listed it like pretty close to Christmas. I definitely feel like this is more of a holiday sweater. But the reason I listed it so late is because my acapella groups, we do a lot of caroling in December and um, we try to wear like ugly Christmas sweaters. And one of my students didn't have one. And I was like, I actually have the perfect one that you can use. And so he wore this a few times and then gave it back. And I turned around and sold it for $55 like literally within days of listing it um, my net profit was $41.10 I love pieces like that and I could not believe that I found one at my local Goodwill 
The next thing to sell on Mercari was this Tommy Bahama Blue Raglan Crew Neck Sweatshirt in a men's size 3XL. This I actually got when I went to the Goodwill Outlet in Denver. My family took a trip to Denver over our fall break. It was lovely. It was amazing. And I went to a Goodwill outlet for just like a couple hours. Um, this was one of the pieces that I got. I had about $2 into it and my net profit was $15 and 56 cents. And that sold really quickly. So I was very happy about that. And then on Poshmark, I had another St. John sale. This was St. John collection. It was a pair of black pull on Santana knit wool blend pants in a women's size 10. It came from that same estate sale as where I got the duster. These sold for $75. I had $12.50 into them because I got them for half off at that estate sale and so my net profit was $47.50. St. John pieces, especially when they're made of their like world-renowned Santana knit, they can just do so, so, so well, as you saw from these two St. John sales in this month. And then on January 20th on eBay, I sold this pair of Madewell wide leg crop high rise button fly jeans in a women's size 28. These I got from my reseller friend. She actually purchased these for herself. I think she wore them for a little bit and she was like, I don't know. I just don't really care for this style of pants anymore. So I got them from her for $10. They sold for $37 on eBay and my net profit was $18 and 75 cents. And those sold pretty quickly. I do love of selling wide leg jeans from Madewell. I feel like they do really, really well. Um, on eBay that same day, I also sold this Polo Ralph Lauren blue waffle knit v-neck long sleeve sleep shirt in a men's size large. I got that from my local consignment store during their birthday sale, so I had $3.47 into it. I don't think I knew at the time that it was a sleep shirt. Had I known that, I don't think I would have picked it up, but it still sold for $15. It was promoted at 3% and my net profit was $7.84. I also sold on Poshmark this Ann Taylor red 100% virgin wool cap sleeve career sheath dress in a women's size 4. That I got as part of a reseller inventory buyout. I don't typically buy Ann Taylor pieces just because, again, there's a lot of it online. I tend to sit on it for a very long period of time if I do ever list pieces by Ann Taylor. Even though I do feel like Ann Taylor is pretty expensive retail, it just doesn't do as well in the resale market. Um, I had $3.85 into that and it sold for $20 and so my net profit was $12.15. And then on the 21st of January on eBay, I sold the Saks Fifth Avenue Folio Gray Grid Print 100% Silk Button Up Shirt in a Men's Size Medium. I did not have high hopes for this. I got this again in a reseller inventory buyout. It did sell for $19.90 and it did sell fairly quickly. It sold within like a couple months. I had $3.85 into it and my net profit on that was $12.99. Not necessarily something that I recommend picking up. Like this piece I'm pretty sure was vintage or close to being vintage. I just didn't have a way to verify which is why I didn't put vintage in the listing title. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend picking this kind of stuff up. I think I was lucky to sell it as quickly as I did. I don't think that's the norm. And then on Mercari, I sold this Marvel Deadpool red hoodie pullover sweatshirt in a men's size extra large. I got that in a reseller inventory buyout as well. I had $2 into it. My net profit was $8.55 and I did have it listed for like a year or something like that. Not the most exciting sale. On January 22nd, I had a few sales across a few different platforms. Um, on eBay, I sold this Crag Hoppers Insect Shield Gray Sleeveless Draped Dress in a Women's Size 6. That one sold for $18. Um, it was promoted at 3%. I had $2 into it from a local consignment store. I picked it up because, one, it was cheap. Two, because it's a brand that is sold at a local store that does like all that outdoorsy stuff so you know this store will sell brands like Patagonia and Arcteryx um, outdoor research brands that you know retail for a ton and Crag Hoppers is one of the brands that they carry however I don't think it's at the same level as like Arcteryx and you know Canada Goose and brands like that but I just wanted to try it out just because I'd seen it at that store um, and I only had two dollars into it it sold for eighteen dollars it was promoted at three percent my net profit was twelve dollars and eighty nine cents and the good news is it did sell within a couple months so um, it was a pretty quick flip but not something that I feel like I need to pick up in the future. 
The next sale on eBay was this pair of Bullhead Rincon, that was the style name, straight tan jeans in a men's size 36 by 32. Um, Bullhead is a brand sold at Pacific Sunwear or PacSun, I guess it's called now. I don't pick up pack sun pieces normally but i got these as part of a reseller buyout um, i had two dollars into them and so my net profit was eleven dollars and 92 cents and those uh, they took i don't know like a year and a half to sell that's mainly why i don't pick up pack sun is because it doesn't sell very quickly and i typically don't get very much for it my next eBay sale was this pair of Athleta Frontier straight leg mid-rise charcoal drawstring jeans. Those sold for $20. I got them at a local consignment store during their birthday sale for $4.29. My net profit on those was $11.77 and they took a few months to sell. The next sale was over on Poshmark. This was something that I had forever. I don't even know where I got it. Actually, I think my brother gave it to me, but it was this Gap cotton cashmere blend gray v-neck sweater in a men's size small. And when I say cotton cashmere blend, I mean like 5% cashmere and the rest of it is cotton, but they get to say that there's some cashmere in it. It doesn't matter. It sold for $12 on Poshmark and I had no money into it. So my net profit was $9 and five cents. I will take it. Um, my next Poshmark sale was this pair of Old Navy black snow pants. Um, they were like the overall snow pants. I guess you could call them like the bib pants. I don't know. There's so many different things you could call them. They were in a toddler size four. Um, they were polyurethane coated. Um, I put the word winter in them. This is the kind of stuff that I try to list every like September or October to just kind of get ready for that snow season and I think even now if you want to list this kind of stuff you can because a lot of people do like to go skiing during spring break but these sold for ten dollars I had no money into them because they were something that a friend of mine from church gave to me my kids wore them and now I'm turning around and listing them just to make a little bit of money you know my net profit was seven dollars and five cents amazing now I can put that money towards their snow pants for next year because every year they need Need new snow pants because they grow out of their old ones. On January 23rd, I had another Old Navy sale. It was this pair of Old Navy Rockstar jeans in a women's size too petite. They were definitely more of like a dark wash and they were low rise. So lots of things going against them. I did not buy them. I got them in a reseller buyout. So I had $3.92 into them. My net profit was $8.08. I would never pick up Rockstar jeans in a size too petite that are low rise. There's just not enough profit to be made in them, but because they were already in my house, I was like, meh, I'll just go ahead and do it. The next sale was over on Poshmark as well. It was this DKNY classic 100% silk purple striped necktie. Um, I put words like formal, wedding, office in the listing title. This sold for $12 with discounted shipping and that's because of a Chrome extension that I use called Posher VA that will send out offers to likers on my behalf five minutes after someone likes an item. It also shares my closet. It also relists stale listings for me. It does a lot of wonderful things, but this item was something that I think my husband just gave me to list because he was like I don't wear ties anymore and I was like cool and my net profit on that was seven dollars and three cents it did take forever to sell though like two years or something like that the next sale on Poshmark was this pair of silver jeans. They were the Mackenzie style, which was like a bootcut low-rise jean. Um, they were in a size 29 by 30. Those sold for $21 with discounted shipping, again, because of Poshmark VA. I do have a coupon code that you can use if you want to try out Poshmark VA as well. It'll help you save 20% off of your first payment, and that coupon code is Becky Park. That came from my coworker. They sold for $21, which obviously is under that $25 threshold, so I gave her $5.91, and my net profit was eight dollars and 87 cents and then on january 24th on poshmark i sold another pair of silver jeans these actually i had picked up at a local consignment store as part of their birthday sale i had 455 into them but these were the avery style they were distressed and they were a skinny jean with like little floral patches on them they were in a size 28 by 29 i sold those for 18 dollars. i think i was just like desperate to sell things so i was taking offers that maybe were not as high as i would have liked and my net profit on those was nine dollars and 85 cents i used to be able to sell silver jeans for at least 25 dollars, sometimes even as high as 35 dollars. i definitely sell them for way less now so i don't pick them up as often and if i do they have to be under like 
$4 for me to pick them up. The next sale from the 24th was on Poshmark as well, and it was this pair of Levi's 501XX buttonfly jeans in a men's size 44 by 32. I've had these forever as well. They came from the Goodwill outlet in Kent, which is like a suburb of Seattle. I got them probably like three years ago. I had $1.42 into them, and so my net profit was $16.56. Um, those also sold as a result of Pasha VA sending out offers to watchers for me, and so I I did have to offer discounted shipping on those as well. And then my last Poshmark sale of the day was this New York Classics gray plaid full zip vest in a women's size extra large. That had zippered pockets on it. That I would never pick up at a thrift store, but it was something that I got as part of a reseller buyout. So I had $2 into it. It sold for $10 and it was a Posh VA sale, which means that they sent out offers to likers, which means they had to offer discounted shipping as well. My net profit on that was $3.03. .03. I should have just sold it at a pop-up consignment sale that I consign with, but I didn't. So I made enough money for some fries from McDonald's. Yeah, me. Um, on the 25th, I had no sales, but on January 26th on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Vans. They were these gray lace-up low-top sneakers in a men's size five or a women's size six and a half. These sold on eBay for $15. I got them from a Goodwill outlet in Indianapolis in 2021. So I'm going to say not the greatest flip of my life. They took a very long time to sell. Um, I only had a dollar and 27 cents into them and my net profit was $12.63. On Poshmark, I sold this pair of Ariat Low Rise M4 Boot Cut Gray Flame Resistant Jeans in a men's size 38 by 30. I don't know, they had the words Westex Ultra Soft on them as well, so I just put that in the listing title. Those sold for $42 with discounted shipping because of Posher VA. I had $9.99 into them from that Goodwill near where my students were rehearsing for a festival. Um, I got them this year though, so they sold really fast and I made a net profit of $21.59. On January 27th, um, on Poshmark, I sold, oh, this was a great sale. I sold this pair of Frame Le Baggy Palazzo light wash wide leg button fly jeans in a women's size 31. So many amazing things going for these jeans, including the fact that they are a bigger size, including the fact that they were high-waisted and they were wide leg and the seam just like, I don't know, it was really cool. They, they were just really cool jeans. They sold for 100 dollars on Poshmark. I think I had them listed for like 125 or something like that. I was very happy with a hundred dollar offer. Um, I had $23 into them from a local Plato's closet. So I made a $57 profit on those. And I was very happy about that sale. On the 28th of January on eBay, I sold this Corey Lynn Coulter, which is a brand sold at Anthropology blue chambray off the shoulder dress in a women's size small petite. This I picked up at my local consignment store um, for $5.50 during one of their sales. It sold for $25 on eBay, and so my net profit was $15.16. On Mercari, I sold this Polo Ralph Lauren. Tavin, that was the style name, roll over shearling trim black pair of leather boots in a men's size 10. I got these at that same Goodwill in the town where my students were rehearsing for a festival. These were even missing their laces, but when I looked up this style of boots from Polo Ralph Lauren, I was like, holy cow, these are actually doing pretty well. So even with missing laces, these sold for $61.09 on Mercari. Um, I do use smart pricing on Mercari, so they were in the process of dropping the price on these little by little every day, and they were at $61.09 when someone was like, you know what, I'm just gonna buy them outright at that price. I'm very happy that they did. I'm just gonna buy them outright at that price. That's one of the reasons why I utilize smart pricing. I know a lot of people are not a fan of it, but it's like a free tool that Mercari gives you to help you make sales. And if it's free, I'm probably going to use it. And I feel like I have benefited greatly from utilizing smart pricing over the years. Um, but these I only had $14.99 into, so my net profit was $37.37. And then on Poshmark, I had another great shoe sale this day. It was this pair of Converse Run Star Hike Platform High Top Lace-Up Shoes. They were in a men's size 7 or women's size 8.5. Um, the person who bought these did leave me a love note and they said, my daughter loves them. They're perfect. Um, 
These were something that Becky sent me for free in one of those boxes of inventory. I thought they were so cool. I just could not believe that she was sending them to me. Um, I'm just so, so, so lucky. And that is a sale that was made through Pasha VA as well. Um, so there was discounted shipping, but I still made a profit of $41.98 because I didn't have anything into those and they sold so fast. So again, Becky, thank you, thank you, thank you. I sold nothing on January 29th, but on the 30th, I did have a good number of sales. Um, on eBay, I sold this vintage Gear for Sports, that's the brand name, um, purple brown university sweater sweatshirt in a men's size large. This was actually my father-in-law's and it sold for $32 on eBay and it sold instantaneously, like within maybe hours of it being listed, I wanna say. It sold so fast. It was promoted at 3%, it sold for $32, and so my net profit on that was $27.38. Vintage collegiate pieces can do really, really well, and Brown is a pretty big university, so it makes sense to me that that sold as quickly as it did for as much as it did. The next eBay sale was this J. Crew Factory red plaid button-down shirt in a men's size small. This my husband gave me to sell. It sold for $17.90, that was an offer that I sent out to watchers and so my net profit on that was $15.70. The next eBay sale was this Lauren Ralph Lauren black and tan safari reversible vest in a size medium. I actually picked that up at a local consignment store during their birthday sale for $3.47 and I did not realize until I sat down to photograph it that that was reversible so that was a nice little bonus. It sold for $29.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. It was promoted at 3% and my net profit was $21.89 and if I remember correctly that sold really fast as well like it only took a month to sell. The next sale on Poshmark was this pair of American Eagle green distressed jeggings. They were like skinny jeans um, in a size 10. This style, I don't pick it up anymore because it just, you know, it doesn't sell for as much because people are not super excited about skinny jeans anymore. And anyone who's like a big fan of American Eagle jeggings, they have all the jeggings that they need. So these sold for $15. I had $3 into them from a reseller buyout and so my net profit was $9. My next Poshmark sale was a pair of Levi's 720 high rise super skinny jeans in a women's size 25. These sold for $29 with discounted shipping because of Pasha VA. I had $4.55 into them from a local consignment store's birthday sale and so my net profit was $16.63. And these did take some time to sell as well. You know, I got them in July of 2023, but not that long, especially considering that they were skinny jeans. So I was pretty happy with that flip. My next Poshmark sale was this pair of True Religion Billy Straight Low Rise Jeans in a size 28. They did have like the flap on the back pockets. Those sold for $30. They were from my coworker. Now the net profit on those was not quite $25. So she made 40% of the net profit, which was $9.60. And I made $14.40. And that was everything I sold in the month of January. So let's talk about my numbers for the month. Month. On eBay, I sold 33 items for a net profit of $692.52. On Depop, I sold one item for a net profit of $33.32. On Mercari, I sold seven items for a net profit of $128.48. Poshmark came in second with 31 sales, but my net sales amount was $487.34 compared to eBay's almost $700. And on my website, I made one sale for a net profit of $13.35. So in total, in the month of January, I sold 73 items total for a gross sales amount of $2,340.05. My cost of goods on everything was $319.36. Now, I actually just started using my reseller genie. I do have a video about it right here, and that is what I'm using now to pull my numbers. So it's a little bit different than what I'm used to. So um, I don't have like the amount that that gross sales amount drops to once you factor in fees and shipping. Um, I'll, I'll figure it out for February's video, but my net profit was $1,392.35 for the month, which 
is not bad. It's not a horrible way to start the month, especially considering that I didn't do a whole lot of work. Um, the really cool thing about my reseller genie is they just give you some really powerful data regarding your sales. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I learned regarding my sales from the month of January. So first of all, I, this was to be expected, but the majority of my sales were women's sales. Um, you know, over $800 of my profit came from women's sales, but close to $600 of my sales were from men's clothing. And I do really enjoy selling men's clothing. So that was really helpful to see, you know, what my profit and sales look like, um, by department. And then I also really enjoyed seeing my breakdown of my gross profit by platform. As you can see, almost 50% of my profit came from eBay, which is astounding, especially considering how scared I was of eBay back in the day. Um, if you're scared of eBay and you're like, I don't know, I just, I don't think I can do it. Check out this video right here. I think it has a lot of really great tips on how to be successful on eBay. And a lot of people have shared with me that they found that video extremely helpful. Really excited about some of this powerful data from my reseller genie and how that's going to help me make better decisions for my reselling business moving forward. But man, that was a lot. I am looking at how long this video is. And right now before any edits, it's an hour and 21 minutes. So if you're still here, thank you so much. You are a real one. And if that's you, definitely don't forget to hit that like button on your way out. I think we both deserve <laughs> that much. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. A huge February video is coming out soon and then probably a March video and then we're gonna try to get back to the weekly videos But again, I just man, it's been harder and harder to find time to film these suckers, but we'll get them done somehow Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye